Good afternoon, everybody. I am done with work and I'm gonna jump right into all of my evening activities. I'm going to try really hard to push through everything despite really wanting to play Animal Crossing. I haven't played in a few days, but I'm off the next two days and I'm really trying to make a conscious effort of not doing a lot of work on my off days, though I think Wednesday is gonna be a stay at home day for both of us because we just got a lot of life stuff to catch up on. But you know us, we always find a way to get out of the house and to a theme park somehow. <laughs> so anyway, but in order to have that all happen, I need to focus today. So I will check in later. Okay, friends, so a little update. So I was all about to be productive. I actually ordered Chipotle through DoorDash because I guess we didn't show you what we ate for dinner yesterday because it was just kind of a long day. Um, but Duncan made this really good Italian chicken breadcrumb stuff, but we ate the normal size pieces yesterday and there's only giant pieces left. And it took me two hours to eat one piece of chicken this afternoon and I could not bring myself to eat the other one. So I thought Chipotle would be a good idea because our other option is like a big roast and I'm not that hungry. So um ordered DoorDash thinking I could save some time and be productive and we're having another restaurant fail moment. I swear, like, we generally let a lot of things go because we understand, because we've, well, we work, I should say Duncan works in a restaurant, so we, we get how this stuff goes, but DoorDash is a little bit different. So when you order DoorDash, for those that have never ordered DoorDash before, it's like a third party that delivers the food. And because Duncan would drive for DoorDash at the beginning of the pandemic when his salary got cut, um, you basically just sit in your car. It's kind of like Uber, but for food. And you, as the driver, can like pick up orders and be like, okay, I'm going to deliver that one. Anyway, so my order gets delivered. And I open it and I'm like, oh, it came with guac and a tortilla and the drink I ordered isn't in here. That's weird. But I get random guac in my orders all the time, like for anywhere, <laughs> like it does not matter. I always get a side of guac and I don't even like it. So it's not even a bonus for me. Anyway, then as I'm explaining to Linda, like it's weird, I ordered a drink, I didn't get it, but I got this guac. She's like, I hope it's your right order. And I go to the bowl. Nope, it says Michelle W. And I was like, and it wasn't even something I would eat because it has cheese and sour cream on it and I'm sort of anti those things. So when you have a problem with a DoorDash order, you have to contact DoorDash directly because the restaurant can't, they don't have access to your credit card or anything like that. Totally fine, I totally understand that. I've dealt with DoorDash before with all of my being on the road and stuff. So I'm on chat with this girl and it took a half hour. She's like, what's wrong with the order? And I was like, well, it wasn't my order. It has a different name on it, et cetera, et cetera. She's like, let me check with them to see if they can handle the redelivery. She offered me credit, refund, or redelivery, but I wanted the food again, so I asked for redelivery. Half hour later, I'm still on chat with her, and they're trying to decide if they can redeliver. And I'm like, seriously? What? Anyway, so I specifically said to her, I was like, can you make sure that to tell them to remake it? Because at this point, my food's been done for an hour and sitting there, and it probably is still sitting there since, you know, it would be really weird if Michelle W would accidentally pick up my food. So sure enough, my food gets re-delivered, which is really great, but they definitely didn't remake my food. In fact, the original sticker that says promised 5 p.m., which was like my original order time, was still on the bag and my food was super cold. And when you order delivery, I don't always expect it to be super fresh, but I've ordered Chipotle to go enough in hotels and at home to know what temperature it normally is. And it's not this cold. So at this point, it's no longer a DoorDash issue. It, I, in fact, I actually don't blame DoorDash to begin with. Um, the DoorDash driver actually 
said that the people working there told them this was my order and they can't check because it's sealed for COVID. So that is my story. I still ate it, but I did email them and ask for a refund because that's annoying. And it was their mistake the first and the second time. I guess to summarize that all, I really should stop ordering food and just have more food in the house. That is my lesson learned over the last week, which actually is the plan after this weekend is we got to save up for our potential Disneyland trip. Um, and in mid-September is my um, travel agency conference. And I imagine I'll be spending a lot of money then. So trying to make smart decisions because after December, I don't necessarily have a job. So got to be smart. Daily Disney for August 31st from The Rescuers. Sitting inside sardine can seats, Bernard and Bianca catch a flight on Albatross Airlines, piloted by Orville. All right, so Disney news today. I was very sad to hear the announcements that the Polynesian is not going to open in October like originally announced. The DVC part is open, or has been open, will continue to be open, but the resort in full is not going to be open, which, like, doesn't really matter if the Polynesian Resort is open, but I really want Ohana to open. Like, that is what <laughs> I've wanted since March, um, and I'm just depressed that I can't get my birthday meal. <laughs> so, um, they stated that Originally, when it, the news broke this morning, um, it was stated they were going to take the time to refurbish the resorts, um, the room and the rooms and the great ceremonial house. Um, and then I also read that the um, monorail will actually not be stopping at the Polynesian temporarily also, which is kind of crazy. So, so they're like shutting down the... the ceremonial well, so they, they can't re -haul it. they can't because the desk is there although they could just like make people go to the concierge building unless they need to redo that one i don't know yeah um i don't know that's it's, chaos it kind of is because like the dvc is still there and like they still have to have captain cooks i mean i guess they don't have to i mean jumbo house doesn't have a quick service right now so you're going to make everybody take the boat? Well, well, they could just have, yes, and they'll probably run buses. Yeah. And then in for Epcot, they just have Epcot buses. I mean, they have Epcot buses now. That's true. So, anyway, it's just kind of crazy. A couple hours later, they announce that there's going to be Moana theming. Yeah, the refurbishment is Moana theming. I... We waited until we got multiple sources confirming. Yeah, because I... The Orlando Sentinel said something. I was like, well, maybe they got bad information. But it's confirmed by a friend of mine. Because if you don't know, I used to work at the Polynesian. And I still have friends that work there. And he confirmed it. Like, I mean, Moana-inspired rooms. They, they've been sneaking Moana into uh, Ohana... With, with like the the dude sings the lava song. Well, that's not Moana. Sure it is. It's a, wasn't it before? I'm pretty sure it was before Moana. No. No. What was it before? I don't remember. Coco, I think. Coco. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um. They did remember when we stayed there last. We noticed that like Maui, was in the carpet. Oh yeah. And we thought it was like we're like why wasn't there any announcement about this. <laughs> like, um, but my friend said that what he saw, like, he had to s hunt for the hey hey in the wallpaper, so I guess it's subtle. But I guess to me, when you say you're gonna redo, like, you were gonna shut down the great ceremonial house, means to me you're gonna redecorate. Yeah. Which, like, they just redid the great ceremonial house, like, 
and the resort went through a massive refurb Overhaul, yeah. when I worked there because I was bored as heck because like all the stuff was closed. Well, like every like there's like every few weeks there was a new longhouse that was closed, so it was never at capacity. Mm -hmm. So I was bored. Um, and I was grateful to look at the waterfall, which then went away. So I can't imagine, unless, are they going to put the waterfall back? I'm not really sure. That would be Moana-esque. I don't know. Um, Remo but remove my... the tiki guy and put a little Maui there. <laughs> that would really annoy me, honestly. But here's the thing. I love Moana. But one, it's still kind of a new movie. So to like... I mean, Tiana's got rooms at Riverside, but here's my thing. Like, I think that the Tiana stuff is really tasteful at, at Riverside, but that resort needed that push to bring guests there. The Polynesian is already very popular. Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised that they're, like, Putting down. Money into it? Well, down with, like, shutting down the Polynesian for this long when, like, that's where a lot of people, like, that's their vacation spot. Yeah. Well, I do get why, because the resorts aren't nearly at capacity. So why not take your time now? They can open something else. And they can open something that's bigger. Like yeah. you could open one of the value resorts and fit more people in and more people could afford to come and, you know... Yeah, but those people that stay at the Polynesian aren't going to go and stay at no, they Pop won't. for... No, but there's plenty of other things, and maybe they'll finally open Animal Kingdom Lodge Jumbo House, which then maybe we can get a quick service there. If you don't know, we're staying... We're supposed to stay at Jumbo House when my sister and her boyfriend come in November, and we're getting nervous that the quick service is not going to open in time, which if they continue to have these early hours, we're going to need a quick service there, so... Um, we're crossing our fingers. Yeah, I, I, listen, like I said, I love Moana. I And listen. I love, I love Pua, and I love Hey Hey, and I like Moana. And I love the soundtrack. I hope you're ready to meet all of them at Ohana instead of Stitch. I know, well, and, but here's the thing. Walk around Pua. Does, does, and there would not be a walk around Pua. There's not a walk around Pumba. I'm just saying. That's fine. Walk around Pua and Hey Hey. <laughs> um, hey Hey would just like run into stuff. <laughs> sounds good for a restaurant, but I maybe it'll be like Moana, Lilo, and Stitch and Mickey. Switch out Pluto. They're gonna bring a live action person. Why not? There's Princess Breakfasts. Yeah, I guess it's actually genius. They could charge more. Yes. Like, way more. Well, I don't know if you can really charge more. They already... That breakfast is already overpriced. Yeah, for one princess. <laughs> but, I don't know. Or maybe they'll just replace Lilo. I don't know. I mean, Pluto is kind of out of place there. Yes. It's because he's a dog. Yeah, I guess. And Stitch is a quote-unquote dog. Yeah. Like, Stitch is Lilo's dog, and Pluto is Mickey's dog. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't think that we need any princess at Polynesian. I don't know. What do you guys think? Am I crazy? I like Moana. I just think it's weird. And the Great Ceremonial House does not need another reverb. Unless, but my friend that told me that it was very subtle and it's nice and it lightens up the room is a very cynical person. So I really do trust him. <laughs> He said it was good. I believe him. It's good. But I'm more nervous. I'm not. I mean, I don't really even care about the guest rooms because I'm never going to stay in them. <laughs> so, but I do care about the Great Ceremonial House. I'm nervous. And I just want Ohana to open. Please, Disney, open Ohana. <laughs> they could, like, just shut down the first floor of... The Great Ceremonial well, House. Well, they obviously aren't. Otherwise, the monorail wouldn't... Right. But, like... I don't know. Just... What are they doing? I gotta know. Just, they're just flooding it. It's just gonna be water everywhere. <laughs> oh, I need... Yeah, I don't know. I'm curious. But... Like water walls. Like you're walking through the ocean. That's not a thing. Yeah. 
So anyway, that's our Disney news for today. And our Disney news for tomorrow is we're going to Hollywood Studios and we're going to attempt to get on Rise of the Resistance for Linda's very, very first time. So of course, because we actually need to get on, we definitely won't get a boarding group, but <laughs> we're going to try anyway. <laughs> hey, as long as the boarding group's actually open at 10 a.m. today. I know. Actually, I would prefer if they didn't. Except we'd be getting there. Yeah. We're going to try to like really get there. Because the first time we went to studios after the reopen, we got there like pretty close to the start of the day. Because we had been told they weren't letting people in early. And then, of course, the day we went, they let people in early. So they couldn't get boarding passes early. But by the time we got in there, it was already 10 because everyone was already backed up because they were allowing people in early. So we're going to beat the crowd. Not that that matters for a boarding group, but we just want to make sure we're in in time. We're in when the park opens. Yeah. And we don't drink Starbucks, so... Kickstarts it is. I don't know. Please sponsor gonna... me so I get them for free. <laughs> I just don't even know what we're going to do for 45 minutes. Oh. Well, I guess you'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> you'll See find you out with us. Everyone needs deadlines. Bye bye. Thanks for coming to the show. And for what? What did he say? And for what?